Okay. Wait a minute. I'm still not in frame. Hi, everybody. <laughs> the reason I'm opening up here is because I wanted to talk to you about this. Is, this is crazy. There, how about this? I don't know why I'm working so hard. Hold on. All right. There we go. Hey, everybody. Adam Savage with a new one-day build that's going to be very quick, almost real time. I was recently in New York, and among the uh, uh, things I did with the free time I had in New York was I went to my friend Tom Sachs' shop, and I did a lot of work in his shop. And I got to really experience how Tom executes his first order retrievability in his shop, which is in many ways similar to my methodology, but far more advanced and refined. Uh, and in many ways blew my mind wide open about the possibilities. And one of the things he has in his shop that I would have never really engaged with unless I was working in it was this. A foot switch for turning on the drill press. I know, the moment I, I was like looking all around for the button and nothing was working and I looked down at this and I turned it on and all of a sudden I'm using, dude, I'm just, I'm so here for this. Uh, so I bought a uh, foot switch for the drill press and installed it and I love it. That's not today's one day build because this happened over the weekend. I was super excited. I didn't want to wait for you, but it's okay because I have another foot switch. And here is the other foot switch. This is, ah, it is such a cool switch. Um, you kick it open in order to use it, boink, and you press down on that, and you start up the machine that you're gonna be using. Um, these are not crazy expensive on the eBay. The, hold on. These are not crazy expensive on the eBay, and they're actually, it's really easy to connect it up. So that's gonna be today's one day build. I'm gonna put that on another tool a tool that is not the uh, drill press, this tool, the standing bandsaw. That is the other tool that Tom has a foot switch on. And it is, look, you come over to this machine holding on to something. Frequently, I'm using my thumb to mark a measurement. And I just not using the switch, having it be a foot switch sounds like heaven on earth. And in his shop, it was. But also, I want to point out that this switch I used down here has recently cracked in half. <laughs> And it still operates, but like the whole bottom half has just fallen off. And I've been meaning to take care of it. And then I was in Tom's shop and I saw a whole new version of reality that was possible. So we're gonna put that foot switch, we're gonna wire this switch to the foot switch down here on the ground so that I can use this thing. I can use three of my four limbs to operate this machine. <laughs> my wife always says that the dog thinks of our feet as floor paws. And the uh, these is our hand, our house pots. Okay, let's make a um, let's wire up a foot switch. So first, I'm going to get some heavy duty wiring and take this apart and get going. And then we're going to be opening, unplugging that, tapping in with probably a couple of lug nuts. This is a really, really straightforward and simple build. It should be done in half an hour. Ha! Let's see. By the way, this is so freaking cool how this works. Wait, you got to see this. You totally got to see this. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay, so the operator steps up to it and kicks that off to operate and then kicks that back down to protect it. It all can be operated with one foot. Dude, that is some great industrial design, how easy that is and how protected it is. I know I don't necessarily need this level of safety protection in my cave, but this was what was 40 bucks on eBay, so I got it. Okay, I'm gonna give you a better shot here. Um, when you're cutting electrical wire like this, 
stripping it back is actually, can be kind of dangerous, and I'll explain why. Um, you don't want to just cut through this outer side and then pull it off because you're probably nicking the wires housing that are inside this. This is three conductor, this is probably 16 gauge, hard to say. At any rate, so what you want to do is you want to kind of roll your blade around the perimeter just a little bit. You just want to kind of break the skin and then you want to come in and with your blade really see where you're separating it. And that this, this allows you, you roll it around that slice to, yeah, there we go, to cut off the housing. This is just responsible electrics to do this. You don't want nicked copper uh, potentially causing a, a short. That, especially with the heavy conductor wire, a short can really spread some heat around and uh, ruin your life. Okay, so, ah, there we go. One, two, three, and no nicks down here. Yeah, that's super important. Uh, we're going to pull out the these guys. One, and two, and three. I don't think I'm going to need that last one, but I've stripped it just in case I do. And we're going to uh, crimp some lugs on there. Excellent. Now we're going to take this. Oh, yeah, what? let's get this going there. The neutral. Oh, 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 I messed that one up. Hold on. Sorry. Well, let's see if we need it. We'll pop this now and we'll just see. I don't think we need it. One. Two, three, and four. Great. So, oh, look, there's a little aphid in there. <gasps> now, I technically should have some strain relief here, but I don't. And I'm not, again, I'm not that concerned about it because this isn't a super harsh environment. Uh, but let's get these guys up and through. Come on. Come on. There it is. That's what I wanted. Yep. Okay, great. Now, uh, on these, they're usually labeled, and these are no exception. One is common, which means you uh, apply the ground to that. And the other is normally open, which means you close it by hitting that. And normally closed means you open it by doing that. So I want the normally open so that I close the circuit uh, when I activate the switch. And we will double check this operation in a moment. Um, so I'm gonna put one here. Great. Um, we're going to use a uh, a fluke multimeter, and I think maybe the single most useful feature of the fluke multimeter of a multimeter in general is the audible continuity, and that is this. Oh, oh, sorry. There we go that when you have continuity, uh, it makes a beat. So uh, continuity, for instance, on the normally closed should exist already. They should, we should hear a beep when I touch the normally closed tap to this one. Oh. No, I don't hear it. Wait, let's see if we hear it when I do the normally open and close it. Okay, for some reason, hmm. Okay, 
I don't need the normally open one, so I'm not really worried about it. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It's because I'm a dummy. That's that's the common. Yeah, you understood. You were yelling at the screen. I apologize. Common, normally open. Yes, that beeps until I hit it. And then it opens the circuit. And that this is normally open, and it closes the circuit when I hit it. Sorry, am I doing all this with my hands covering it? <clears throat> That's the common, that's the normally open, that's the normally closed. If I touch this to the common and I touch this to normally closed, I end up with a circuit that is on until I hit the switch and then I break it. But what I need is the other one. I need it normally open until you hit the foot switch and then it closes the circuit and gives you the operation. I hope that was clear. Maybe we didn't have to cut in all the beginning part of that. So now that that is connected, I want to add a little bit of, well, I don't even know if I, yeah, I kind of, I definitely do. Hold on just a sec. I'm going to add some strain relief. And my strain relief will be just really simple, a zip tie or two. that the wire can't come out back through the hole. And we'll feed that back through. It's already not wanting to move around very much, which is great. That's just what I want. And there we go. Okay, good. good. this there, like that, and then we close it up. I get all four screws started before I tighten down any of them. That's how you keep from cross-threading. Amazing! So now I want to just double check operation here, and I'm going to spin this around. Spin this around. I'm going to can, gonna check. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh right, right, right. I need to know how long this is going to be. Okay, so uh, if this is going to be on the ground, let's see here. This is going to be over here, and then this will come up, and I think it's going to come up from the back and come over here. So it'll do one of those to that. Yeah, that seems like enough room. So, we'll just slice this guy. There. And we'll do the same strippy poo on the wire. Hey, 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 stop it. The strippy poo on the wire here. Uh, I'm not going to expose as much. Again, I'm just trying to get through a little bit of the outer layer. And, and I'm doing less slicing than just kind of rocking. And the rubber will get out of your way. It takes just an extra few minutes, but for like, this is mission critical, man. It's going to be in your shop. You should make sure you're not nicking your wires. Oh. Electricians wish you knew this one simple trick. I am not an electrician. You should not be taking what I say as gospel for an electrician. Uh, no, that is not that one. It's that one. Let's get that out of the way. Expose. Of that, one of that. Okay, uh, now bring the saw over here. Don't need that. Do need that. Okay, so now I'm going to pull up this guy. Yeah. Okay. All that is just terrible. 
know how much dust there is in there. That's ridiculous. Let's blow it out. Connect this up here, and this will be the switch operation on those switches. And then I've got some heat shrink I'm going to put up there. But first, before I do this, I just want to check operation. So to check operation, I'm going to plug in the machine. It shouldn't turn on. Great. And it should turn on when I hit this switch switch. Yeah! Very happy. That's great. So now what I want to do is I want to get that heat shrink going, which is And that's just to keep any shorts from happening in there. Great. I'm gonna secure all this stuff in there. And then we're also gonna get this on there. Oh, right, right, right. I need a little more clearance back there. Oh. Yeah, wait. Oh, yeah, yep, 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 all done. back in and down here and one down there and there you have well, we're gonna put this in hold on <coughs> okay so I want this to go from behind so I'm gonna feed that back there This also comes from behind, so I'm going to feed this back there. Great. And then I'm going to bring this one. Hey, hey, hey. That's enough out of you.
Oh, I see. That's why. Yeah. Great. Um, light on the equation and now I am a person walking up to my bandsaw and hitting it. Oh. I may screw that down. In fact I'm definitely going to screw that down. Hang on just a sec. Oh you can't even see it. Hold on let's try this. Oh nope. Hold on. That's it. Much better. Let's get you that cutaway. Yeah. Walking up to it. What did I tell you? Almost in real time. Foot switch now activated and now this machine Thank you, Tom, for showing me a new way. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'm, Adam, I'm, I'm, Adam I'm Adam Savage, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.